Thank you, Chairwoman Woolsey and Ranking Member Price for inviting me here to speak today. For over a generation now, families have been struggling to figure out how to balance work and family responsibilities at home. The recession is exacerbating these challenges for families. And in my comments today, I want to lay out how the recession is affecting families and how it makes the need for family-friendly workplaces ever more urgent. We must update, update our, antiqui our antiquated policies and ensure that as we rebuild our economy, we recognize and address the fact that both men and women work inside and outside the home. Women are increasingly taking on the responsibility of supporting families as men's jobs have disappeared. During the first 12 months of this now 14-month-long recession, men have held four out of every five jobs that have been lost. The share of men in the United States with a job right now is lower than it's ever been. Fewer than seven out of every 10 adult men is actually at work today. So far, half of the job losses that have occurred have been in either construction or manufacturing, two industries where men are the overwhelming majority of workers. On the other hand, women's jobs have been sustained over the past year by hiring by government and, health, and the health care sector, where they are the majority of workers. This recession is amplifying the long-term trend towards the importance of women's earnings to family economic well-being. Yet, women continue to earn just 78 cents on the male dollar, much of which cannot be explained by differences in the kinds of jobs that men and women hold, nor their skill levels. As male unemployment rises, pay discrimination has become a more pressing issue for millions of families. Since the typical husband in a dual earner family brings home just under two-thirds of his family's income, the loss of his job and potentially his health insurance can quickly push a family into economic hardship. Now, Congress has dealt with some of these issues in passing the Lilly Ledbetter Fair Pay Act, but there is certainly more to do. The Paycheck Fairness Act still sits in front of the Senate, and its passage is critical to ensuring that every worker gets a fair day's pay. Further, the administration should ensure that the laws we already have on the books are enforced and that workers with caregiving responsibilities are not discriminated against, especially in these tough economic times. No family should have to cope with a wage earner losing a job because they needed time off to care for a sick child or family member. Yet, the Family and Medical Leave Act only covers half of the labor force and excludes workers in firms with fewer than 50 employees. Expanding this right to smaller employers would limit the unemployment of workers with caregiving responsibilities. And establishing the right to job-protected paid sick days would guarantee that no one loses a job because of a minor illness. The recession has led many employers to cut hours, the share of workers who work part-time due to slack work or business conditions is now at its highest share since the 1950s. Shorter hours mean that millions will be left without basic benefits, such as health insurance coverage and paid time off. Access to health care benefits for part-time workers is now more critical than ever. The recession is turning out to be deeper and much more protracted than many had predicted even a few months ago. The American Recovery and Reinvestment Act is a crucial down payment on creating jobs in the months to come and laying the foundation for long-term economic growth. In particular, the recovery package will help states avoid cutbacks, safeguarding some women's jobs. The Council of Economics Advisors estimates that about four out of every ten jobs created by the recovery package will um, likely go to female workers. But the recovery package alone will not be enough to close the gap between what the economy is currently producing and what our economy has the capacity to produce. Work-family balance policies are an excellent investment in our long-term economic growth while also providing short-term economic stimulus. For example, the Family Income to Respond to Significant Transitions Act provides grants to states to implement programs that provide wage replacement for those taking leave for the birth or adoption of a child, to recover for an illness, or to care for an ill family member. This act would encourage states to support working families at a time when families especially need the benefit of paid, um, paid time off and job protected leave, while providing a boost to the states who adopt these policies. As families face this tough economy, we must update our work-family balance policies to reflect changing needs and a transformed workplace. Ensuring that workers can be both good employees and good caregivers is a good place to start to rebuild our economy and secure our economic future. Thank you again for inviting me to speak here today.